the first time John made me brisket, I had never eaten sliced brisket before. I had always uh, shredded it, you know, carne de cebrada in Spanish. And so um, I cut a chunk off of the brisket and I just started shredding it. And he's looking at me <laughs> like, why are you doing that? <laughs> well, how do you eat brisket? <laughs> I eat it in a taco. <laughs> But then that's kind of how I showed him, well, this is how we eat flautas. And it's interesting because in Houston, everybody eats chicken flautas. But where I come from, it's always beef. That was just like one of the things that we started to realize about Texas and how big of a state it is and just how much uh, culture and history has influenced the food that we eat. You don't really think about that. I mean, the interesting thing with John's family and him uh, and his grandfather is that his grandfather made chili. And so for him, chili is really important to him, but they actually ate tamales, little baby tamales in a half a dozen covered with chili. Um, if you kind of learn more about um, history, the history of San Antonio, they often talk about the chili queens from San Antonio. And so you start to see like on a timeline how these things really correlate um, and then become something else. Everything is made from scratch in-house, uh, you know, starting with your typical brisket, pulled pork, pork ribs. Uh, we've got a smoked chicken that we do that's really fantastic as well. And we make all of our uh, sausage and boudin in-house. We've got a jalapeno cheddar a beef and garlic, which is actually um, an all beef sausage. So we actually do use a, a beef casing for that sausage. Right. Uh, and then we have a mild and a spicy boudin. You know, we do hand cut our own steaks in house um, and we grind our own meat for the sausage, of course, but also for our burger nights on Thursdays. On the weekends, we run a barbecue brunch menu. Um, one of my favorites is probably the boudin Benedict. Oh, so. wow. Um, it's kind of nice because okay. the Benedict, we, we serve it loose, uh, so it kind of gets a nice little char on the grill, a nice little poached egg in the hollandaise, just something about it, just like the acidity of the hollandaise paired with like the creaminess of the yolks um, over that rice is just really, that's my favorite for sure. We also make a um, brisket tamal uh, using the smoked uh, beef tallow. Um, and that again, like the tamal itself does not have any pork lard in it. So right. part of the reason why it's half store, half restaurant is because of the nature of the building. It was always a little neighborhood market and we're in a historic neighborhood. So we really could make a lot of changes to the shop. So we wanted to kind of stay true to what it always was. Um, the building has been here since the 1930s and we're both uh, avid uh, Houston lovers and just found that things were always on their way out. And so we didn't really like the idea of this building ever being destroyed. So we thought, well, let's make it more permanent by opening a barbecue restaurant. We do also focus on local, so we support over a hundred different businesses in the store. If you know anything about Houston, there was a lot of little stores like this throughout the city. Not all has survived, but this one I think was very fortunate because of it being in a historic neighborhood that it's been cared for. This building was originally owned by an Italian family uh, no, known as the Scardinos, and they uh, called it Scardinos Food Mart because they sold mostly fresh produce. Can you tell me how you got into this? It's a love story. <laughs> I'm an architect by trade, and so when I first met my husband, uh, I was introduced by a mutual friend. He was looking for an architect. He wanted to open a barbecue restaurant in this place, and um, he needed someone to kind of help fulfill that vision. So he brought me here, and I basically said, you're crazy, it's never gonna work, don't do it, and then I helped him. <laughs> Um, so we kind of had a long uh, little roundabout way to, of coming to open this place uh, because he actually ended up moving to New York. He opened a barbecue restaurant out there and then one day he came back and we came to see that this place was still empty. So we kind of felt like it was the perfect opportunity to, to open something up. We actually started in a food hall and uh, we had a different concept called uh, El Burro and the Bull. It's interesting because Henderson and Kane has slowly become more of what that place used to be. Um, but for us, we always refer to it as um, Comida Tejana. Um, 
being uh, myself from El Paso and my husband from Houston, one of the things that we came to realize is that we ate brisket differently. Uh, we cooked it differently. And um, what we knew to be Mexican food was also very different, <laughs> just based on where we were born and, you know, how long our families had been in Texas, which for John was, you know, fourth generation and for me was first generation. We started really kind of influencing each other on what we cooked. I think the one thing that me and uh, John really connected over was the fact that both of our grandparents came from restaurants. So his grandparents had a barbecue restaurant in Bryan College Station. And um, for many, many years, they were most known for their tamales, their chili, <laughs> and their barbecue. So um, what was it called? It was called uh, Signs Tamales and Barbecue. He grew up kind of spending the summers at the restaurant and just really had an affinity to that service industry. I mean, and then for me, uh, my grandparents had a, uh, a food truck where they served Mexican food. So like every weekend it was menudo, tamales, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. What I didn't realize when we met was just how much I loved serving people and being hospitable. I mean, uh, I feel like when you're raised in a Mexican family, you're kind of trained to like give a kiss, a hug, and ask someone what they want to drink and eat when they show up at your house. So something about this environment came very natural to me, where all of a sudden I felt like I was taking care of everybody that came in the door, um, which I love because on the flip side, I don't have to cook anything, <laughs> but I have an opportunity to, to, to still serve people, which is really nice.